All right, folks, welcome back to the program. Thanks so much for being with us. Uh, he is the host of the Josh uh, Bernstein Show, uh, which is uh, on Amazon TV. Uh, you could also get him on a plethora of uh, other apps. Uh, Josh uh, Bernstein, and he joins us now via phone. Josh, how are you this morning, sir? I'm tired, but uh, I'm here. <laughs> okay, good, good. Yeah, I know. It's on West... 430 in the morning where I'm at. So, West Coast yeah. time, yeah. And uh, yeah. I really Not exactly pre... drive time. Yes, yeah, exactly. <laughs> not, yeah, not over there. But bad people are driving to work uh, over here, you know, across the state of Arkansas. Uh, yep. So, Josh, first of all, tell us a little bit about um how you got involved in uh, i know you know this your, your television show i know it started with a podcast and you are conservative also the national spokesman for amac so tell us a little bit about yourself sir yeah uh, again uh, i've been doing it for about seven years now um tv talk show host national spokesman professional speaker um i've done over 2500 radio interviews uh, not too many this early but uh and over 50 television interviews and uh I cover things in the media that others refuse to cover and ignore. And for that, I'm uh, targeted as uh, someone that doesn't toe the globalist line and is not for open borders and for Agenda 21. And I fight against those things each and every day. And I've got the, uh, you know, the scars to prove it. Um, I'm demonetized on YouTube. I'm shadow banned on Twitter. I'm typically a, uh, a guest in uh, Zuckerberg's lovely gulag for a 30-day stay at a time on yes. Facebook. And, uh, you know, because I'm a truth seeker and a truth teller, I cover things that others refuse to cover. So, I saw one of your uh, latest videos. It was on Julian Assange and some of the uh, potential, uh, you know, psychological torture that, uh, that apparently yeah. is going on. You know, there are reports of that. Yeah, absolutely. Um, well, there's actually some good news, a, a good follow-up, if you will. Uh, the Department, uh, State Department, um, Justice Department, just released information pertaining to Julian Assange and said that they're not going to prosecute him for the CIA Vault 7 leaks. They are, however, going to continue to prosecute him for helping uh, Bradley or Chelsea or whatever it calls itself these days Manning uh, for those leaks. So that is something that they're still going to go after him. And then I also found out tonight that the Swedish uh, courts are not going to uh, demand a detention for uh, Julian Assange for the alleged rape case from 2010. So definitely two good developments uh, in that respect. Um, look, we, we can't put whistleblowers who want to blow their whistles in jail. Mm -hmm. uh, it's just, it's not, you know, who we are as a people. It sets a dangerous precedent, number one. And number two, it's going to deter others to look into areas where they find darkness so that they can shine light on that darkness. Mm -hmm. And uh, corruption and crime and cover-ups uh, are not going to be something that people are going to try to go after because of fear of retaliation and incarceration and everything else. We're talking with Josh Bernstein. He's the host of uh, Amazon TV, uh, the Josh, uh, I'm sorry, the Josh Bernstein Show on Amazon TV, yeah. national spokesman for, uh, for AMAC. Um, yeah, you know, Josh, this, this, uh, this whole situation, um, you know, you mentioned uh, uh, you don't take the globalist line. Do you think it's interesting that almost every major country in the world is having a problem controlling who comes in and out of their country? Well, look, I, I, I think a lot of it has to do with uh, the fact of the European Parliament and Brussels. Uh, they dictate to, you know, the 28 or 29 countries that are left in the European Union. Hopefully Brexit happens sooner than later. Uh, and they cannot control their borders. They don't have a say in who comes in and out of their country. Uh, we have a sieve on the southern border, and we've got people coming into our country that are unvetted from other places. We just found, what, 20 or 30 uh, Africans that were stopped at the Rio Grande coming into the country here just recently. We've got typhoid fever. We've got other diseases, communicable diseases that, you know, we're in third world countries now. You've got Los Angeles police officers suffering, uh, you know, some of the symptoms from these things. So look, not only do we need a border wall on the southern border, we need a border wall on the northern border because, you know, we've got this, you know, socialist 
up there in uh, in Canada, who's you know running that country, Trudeau, and he's bringing in ISIS fighters, thinking that somehow he can bring these people into the, his country and you know uh, rehabilitate them. And meanwhile, he's you know almost banning Christianity in public. I did a full report on that. The Supreme Court has come down hard against anyone that's a Christian in that country, and uh, it's really sad. You see these things happening, George. Soros spent $500 million uh, financing the migrant caravans. Again, yep. that's all true information. But, so, but, but, but you're an anti-Semite if you bring that up. You know, Right, of course. Yeah, uh, being Jewish, too, right? Mm-hmm. I don't know how you can be an anti-Semite and be <laughs> Jewish, but, or be called a Nazi like I typically am called. So, yeah, funny stuff. Um, so let's talk a little bit about uh, Alan Dershowitz. I've got this uh, article from Breitbart.com last week. Uh, he's saying that mm-hmm. impeachment would be the kiss of death for Democrats in 2020. What do you mm-hmm. think about that? Oh, absolutely. Look, I-, I think the American people are fed up with the Democrats. Look, y- you've got, what, 50 votes in the House right now that they say confirmed, uh, 51 if you add the fake Republican and Justin Amash, who, by the way, doesn't hate Trump and doesn't hate Trump because of the Constitution. He hates Trump because his policies on China is going to affect his cheap Chinese tech and tools. Okay? Let's get that straight. Wow. So you've got 51 votes, uh, looks like right now, uh, nowhere near the amount that would be needed. We know that it's dead on arrival in the Senate. So, you know, they're they're wasting their time. They're wasting political capital, and and certainly they're going to hurt themselves uh, in 2020 moving forward because they're going to be seen as the obstructionists that they are. They're now projecting with everything. They want to hold uh, Barr and McGahn in, in contempt. I don't know for what, nothing really. And uh, Operation Boomerang is in full swing and full effect, and it's going to take down many of these officials, many of them. So you, you think, so? I, I, I do too. I mean, I, I think Brennan, Clapper, Comey, uh, I think they're all uh, potentially you know, going to be uh, indicted at some point. D- do you think so? Look, I would love it, and I've said this publicly, and I'll say it again. I would love for all of them to, you know, hatch a ride on old Sparky. I don't think it's going to happen. I think that, uh, you know, U.S. Code 18-2381 is treason. That's what President Trump believes has happened. Barr kind of tempered those in the interview with CBS News, uh, and others have said that it's treason as well. This was an all-out treasonous coup against the president. But in reality, unfortunately, there is a two-tier justice system. Uh, I think you're looking at uh, lots of situations are going to happen in the next coming months in which you're going to see immunity given to many of these deep state swamp monsters. Uh, Lisa Page certainly will probably be one of them to testify against Peter Stroke. Uh, I think Andrew McCabe is in trouble. I think Brennan and Clapper are in trouble. And I think Comey is probably in trouble as well. And there's probably going to be a couple other lower-hanging fruits. But in reality, these aren't going to be 20, 30, 40, 50-year sentences. Okay, these are going to be 18 to 36 months. They're going to be Otisville, New York, where they have arugula and tennis lessons all day. These people aren't going to do hardcore time. They may do some time in a a cushy place that has, you know, ice machines and and lockers for your clothes and conjugal visits. But it's not going to be, you know, San Quentin, and it's not going to be Rikers Island like they just decided to send Paul Manafort, mm-hmm. who is a non, you know, uh, threatening uh, person who did a nonviolent crime, bank fraud and tax evasion, and now they're going to sentence him and put him in solitary confinement in Rikers Island starting on Thursday. That is absolutely insane. That is insane. And it's all from, you know, Mueller, who, you know, finds something that he did that had nothing to do with Donald Trump, you know. Exactly. Process exactly. Crime. They process crimes that no one ever gets uh, in trouble for. I think there was five convictions in the history of uh, FARA, the FARA with Crest, the um, hmm. foreign, uh, what is it, uh, not registering as a foreign agent. I can't think of what yeah. it's called. Yeah, yeah. 430 in the morning. Um, well, you know, that, if that... <laughs> If that happens, well, first of all, regardless of whether, how much time they serve, if, if, if they do do something, I, I do think, yeah. and let me get your response to this, do you think they're trying to discredit Barr, who had this, you know, uh, for what it's worth, I'm told, good reputation on both sides before he started working for Trump, but you got to discredit Barr, so if this does come down the pike, all of a sudden they can then say, we're a banana Republican, President Trump is prosecuting his political opponents. 
No, I, I think this is more about running out the clock, trying to turn the tides against the, for the American people against the president to keep this investigation going as long as humanly possible so that they can gain some kind of advantage in 2020. The problem is it's going to have the opposite effect. People understand. They can see what's happening. And once these FISA um, you know, warrants are you know, redacted and, and declassified and all this information comes out, you're already starting to see the circular firing squad that's taking place. You know, you've got Brennan against Clapper and Clapper against Brennan and Comey against Rosenstein and all these others. And, and I'll tell you right now, Rod Rosenstein, I believe, is going to be the key to taking down these deep state swamp monsters. And the reason is because he's been the acting attorney general now for two plus years. He knows where all the bodies are buried. He knows where all the emails are hidden. And I think that when they realized he was going to wear a wire and invoke the 25th Amendment, before they fired him and told him to resign, Barr was smart enough to keep him on, bring him to the meeting with Mueller to get more information. And I think they told Rod Rosenstein, look, here's what you're looking at. Here's what we've got on you. However, we'll give you 100% immunity if you testify against your deep state buddies. I believe that's going to happen. And uh, we'll have to wait and see if I'm correct. Yeah, that's, you know, I, I certainly hope so. He looked like a prisoner at that bar press conference, you know, standing he to the left of the did. bar. Yeah, he really did. Uh, Josh Bernstein, host of the Josh Bernstein Show uh, on Amazon TV. Look him up, folks. It's some really good stuff. Josh, thank you so much for being up with us this morning. No problem. Early. And I'd love to do it again sometime. Maybe we can tape it so you don't have to get up so early. <laughs> any, any. Uh, I usually say any time, any topic, but on this one I'll say any topic. <laughs> and just as long as it's at least at 530 in the morning okay. or All a little right. later. We can make it 530 for sure for you. Uh, right. Appreciate it, Josh. Thank you so much. No so, problem. Go